Hi, my name's Vince from my mate Vince, and in this video today we have another B&O product, Bang and Olufsen. Here we have a Bluetooth speaker, a surprisingly heavy Bluetooth speaker, and like anything with Bang and Olufsen, and not a cheap one, even when faulty. So I had to pay £65 for this here, and it is a B&O BO Play A2 black Bluetooth portable speaker, and the write-up says. Not much really, it says faulty, please note, comes from job lot. Everything always comes from a job lot, doesn't it? History unknown, won't turn. Small damage on one corner. I presume that means won't turn on because it doesn't turn on. Now, I think the damage that was mentioned is this little bit down here, but yet this bit here was not mentioned. If you have a look here, we've got a nice crack going all the way along here. So, uh, do you know what? It doesn't really matter. The, it's kind of flexible anyway. Very plasticky for a B&O product. It says here, designed by Bang & Olufsen in Denmark, made in China. So, uh, yeah, let's see what it's like on the inside. Anyway, it doesn't power on. The listing is quite correct. So first things first, let's get the power supply up here, see what it should be, and see if we're getting the reading here. Then let's get into it, and let's see if we can trace the voltage through it, see what's happening. I've never worked on one of these before. I haven't owned one of these before. This is a trying to fix video. At this moment in time, I do not know if I'm gonna be successful. I don't know how many people have looked at this before. Maybe it's never been opened up before, but it probably has. Let's get started. Output 15 volts, 2.8 amps, and it's center pin positive. So that's all very normal. So let's see if we do have 15 volts on it. Go to volts DC. Yeah, 15 volts. Yep, so uh, power supply is definitely okay. Let's get into this thing and see if we can work out what's going on. So I presume because it's broken here, this is probably how you get into it. Oh, look at that, we've got a USB, mini USB hidden away in there. I wonder if that's for updating it. Got loads of torque screws around here. Got a little stand, legs here, so it can stand up like this. Apparently the sound's supposed to be very good on this, which you would expect is an expensive product. Oh yeah, look, there's lots of damage up here, so it's been pried from here. So uh, yeah, this has been a part before. More speakers this side, right, model BO Play A2. Okay, let's see what's in here. Do you know what? I wonder whether these are gonna be the batteries, you know, like the vape batteries, the 18650s? I think that's what they are. Would it be a battery issue if, for example, when you plug it in, it's uh, maybe if the battery's completely flat, even when you plug it in, it's not going to work? Could be. Right, that looks like a Torx 9. Do you know what? I've had a bit of a run of uh, hard videos and videos that just go on and on. So I'd quite like this one to be something more normal. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this is where the battery pack is. It's well and truly in there though, isn't it? Let's see if I can gently ease it out. Yeah, it's all been pried down here before, so this has definitely been looked at. Now, is that gonna plug into here or does that go through? Oh, here we go, look, you can plug it into here. Yeah, this is all broken here as well. Right, so we've got our battery pack here. 7.2 volts, 15 watt hours, 220 milliamp hours. Yeah, that's gonna be two of those cells stuck together. I wonder, could you make your own one? You know, if you take out this battery board or whatever this thing is here. Let's see, we might have voltage in here, so we're gonna be looking at 7.2. So basically, it's uh, they're in series, aren't they? So it's 3.2. Well, what are they each? Hold on, they're 3.7 each, aren't they? So uh, 3.7, that's uh, 6, 7.4. So 7.2 seems seems low. When they're charged, they should be at 4. Point, this should be like uh, 8.2. No, there's no voltage here at all. 
Ah, uh, that's annoying now because that means that battery pack's not going to come back to life, I don't think. Ah, uh, I suppose it's been left so long dead. Okay, I'm thinking it should still work off mains anyway. Let's open this up. Uh, these seem to be a Torx 10. Here we go. Now, what lurks inside? What lurks inside here? Ooh. Couple of big caps. Now, let's disconnect that. I'm just going to take a picture. Okay, so it looks like we've got a little tweeter and then a bigger speaker here. They look nice, even the kind of uh, cone on the inside there just looks nice. It's kind of concertinaed. Right, okay, what have we got going on in here? This must be an aerial. Speaker here. This is where the battery comes in. I don't know where that goes to though. Goes across here somewhere. Can't even see. Let's see if we can remove this board. It looks like it's stuck down with all this foam. Got a screw here, screw here. Let's undo the screws. I'm wondering now if it's not turning on or charging because that battery is so low. I wonder, is it just that? Maybe somebody didn't use this because this is quite old. Maybe somebody didn't use it for years. Then they went to use it and it's uh, not powering on. I think the battery connector goes to the other side here. Oh, here we go. And get to it from this side. Right. Oh, so the aerials, yeah, the aerials soldered down. Well, I don't really think this has been looked at that much because none of this stuff looks like it's been undone. I'll be honest, so far it's not very nice to work on. It's easy to take apart, but just all this glue and stuff makes it uh, makes it horrible. But I suppose if you were to drop it, there's no chance of these connections coming undone. Ah, oh, they've oh, that's annoying. They've soldered it right into the board. Ah, oh, it's not even a connection. It's soldered in. What's going on? Yeah, they come to here. I wonder, are these the contacts here? Let's see if we've got voltage on these little things here. Yes, we have 15 volts. So we've definitely got 15 volts there on that side there. So the plug's fine. Where does that go down to? Looks like it goes down onto these pins here. Then I kind of lose it. Uh, let's see if we can work out where the positive goes. Let's go to continuity. Let's zoom right in. I'm gonna unplug it for the moment. So we've got the 15 volts here, yeah? And it goes down onto where? Oh, just this one pin. It goes round just onto that one pin, the third pin there. Does that look rusty? Let's zoom in more. Where are we? Ah, that's rusty. That negative, that negative, 
is not, I don't think that negative's connected. Can you see there, from here, so the positive's going through, but look at the negative. That's on that pin there, and that looks broken. Let's see if we can get a continuity test on that. Let's see if we've got it between the pin and here. Oh, we have. Oh, we have. That's annoying. Oh, well, that looked completely broken to me, didn't it? Right, let's see if we can see. So they go through the board, don't they? Let's see if we can see them on this side. Where did they go? Up here, it must be. The second and third pin. Second and third pin. So, it's going to be that one. Uh, that one and that one. So now let's plug it in and see if we've got voltage on those two pins. So I can go to that little via there. Oh, we have. Isn't that unbelievable? Because you've seen the rust was on there. I was sure that was going to be it. Okay, that's not it. But there is rust there, so does that signify that we have got a bit of water damage on here? I think it probably does. Let's see if we can trace it any further than that. Sure, that was going to be the problem. Right, so it goes back through the board a few millimetres along from that one there. So it goes underneath this. I need to take this off. Right, two more screws here. If I undo these, that might give me access without having to unsolder everything. Yes, excellent, brilliant. Let's see where that goes to on the board. So it goes to here. No, it doesn't come up the other side. Ah, this is a... Oh, unless it is just a test point. Test point, test point. Sorry, I thought that was a fire going through the board. Because look, it doesn't actually come up on this side on the... Uh, there's nothing, you know, there's nothing on the ground here. Yeah? Nothing looks corroded at all. So I suppose what we could do is let's just reflow this one here just in case it is making some kind of iffy connection. You can see there that the solder's definitely snapped from there, but I don't think it's that. And uh, then I think we need to see if there's any voltage getting to the battery connector when it's when it's plugged in. Let me get my soldering iron on. Oh, hold on a minute, we can see where it goes to from here, look. Yeah, so it goes to the other side, but that is just for a test point. It must be on this rail here, this big rail, so this must be the input, this one. So that might be acting like a fuse. I wonder whether that's blown. While the solder line is heating up, let's check it out. So go to continuity. And let's just see if we go on to pin three here. Is it coming up here? Yes, it is. Yeah, it's going through. Then it goes through here. Then it goes through here. Where does it go to then? It goes to here. These are just capacitors. They're not shorted. No. Then it goes to where? That side of the resistor. Does it come out of that side? Let's get an ohms reading on that resistor. Okay, it's climbing and then goes to the mega ohms. Why is that not settling down? Hmm. Tell you what, let's see where it goes to after that. Maybe we can get a, uh, a reading from the next point. So it goes through here, travels along, to a via here. Right, let's see if we can see where that goes to. Via here, that's going to be hard to find. Oh, have we got a burnt component here? Ha ha. There we go. There we go, that's toast. So it must go through, hold on, which does it go through to? Well, to me, it looks like it's coming up there, but that can't be doing anything, can it? It's not connected anywhere. But anyway, look, it's led us to this area, hasn't it? 
and we've got a completely blown something or other, but what is that? What even is it down as? So this is down as a, uh, well that's saying D, it's some sort of weird diode, capacitor, Q5, Q4, I'm not going to know what that is, am I? Let's see if we've got shorts around here. So that's why power's not getting into the board. Let's see if these are shorted. No. No, nothing's shorted there, but that's definitely blown. I'll just get my head around here. Let's pretend that that Q and that Q is the same. On the top here, we have 2.7 volts. And then that one we have 2.7 volts. So that one and that one's the same. And this is the different one. So same, same, different. So in which case, this one and this one should be the same, and that should be different. So here we've got 15 volts. Here we've got 2 volts. So it's, uh, it's different. But it's just kind of reversed. I mean, surely that's blown. Look at the state of it. But yeah, it does look like it's still putting voltage into the board, but is it the wrong voltage? Uh, oh, struggling again. Struggling again. Right, let's uh, plug in the battery, see if there's any voltage getting to this battery. No, I can't even get onto the wires there, can I? So let's plug it in and let's go onto the pins here and see if I get anything. I'll just go onto the red and black. Point eight volts. Anything else? Anywhere else? One point nine. Two. Two. Let's see if anything's getting warm. I mean, it has to be to do with that. That's at the beginning. That's at the beginning and it's burnt. But it's just strange how we have got voltage going into the board. Definitely got 15 volts coming up this big rail here. Let's just go further into the board in case we see more damage. It's coming along on the third pin, going through here, through here, then to here. So this is the feed area here. So it has to go, whatever it does, it has to go through to here. So we need to see what sort of power we've got here. This one here, what did we say? 2.8 was it? 3 volts, 3.1 volts. Which goes to there, 3.1 volts. We've got 15 here. We had 15, oh no, 3.1 there, yeah. So is this the side feeding? The system, is the system running on 3.1 volts? Ah, hold on now. Yeah, we've got 3.1 there. I was going to say I didn't think we had anything. Right, where does it go to then? Is it going into this chip here? Ah, is this like a power supply? Let's see what voltage we got on here. 0 0.8. 0 0.8 volts. So where's the rail? So it goes in here. This is where you've got 3.1 going into this chip here on those two pins, I think. Let's have a look. Yeah, 3.2. Is it on the second one as well? Yeah, 3.2. So that chip is getting fed. I think what we need to do is, 
What do we need to do? I'll tell you what, let's just solder up that tiny little pin that we've seen was rusty earlier. And uh, I think I need to look maybe up, look up what that chip is. You see that transistor is definitely, or voltage, whatever it is, let's just call it a transistor. It's definitely bad. I mean, it's been burnt all over the place, but yet it's still doing something. You know, if it is like a voltage regulator, it's putting 3.3 volts into here. And this, of course, maybe this needs more than 3.3. But if this chip here says that it needs 8 volts, then we know that, well, this is only doing 3.3 volts because it's faulty. If this needs 3.3 volts or 3 volts, then we know that, although it's a mess, it's doing its job. I know it needs to be replaced, but what do I replace it with? And if it's not going to fix it, there's no point in me worrying about this now if there's something else wrong. Right, I'll put a little bit of flux on there. Let's see if I can get a bit of solder on there. Okay, so I've just given them a little uh, little tap there with the soldering iron, and it looks now that that broken little joint, which wasn't actually broken, is now going to be okay. Just going to clean it with IPA, and then uh, I think I'm going to clean up that little chip that you've seen to see if I can find out what markings are on the top. Right, so I'm using a bit of isopropyl alcohol, which is 99.9%. Just going to clean that burnt thing as well while I'm here. Right, let's see if we can work out what that says. Oh, here we go. BQ24133. Texas Instruments, is it TI-471? Let's look up what a BQ-24133 is. I bet that's some kind of power management chip. Yeah, so that chip is Texas Instruments and it is a standalone one to three cells synchronous buck battery charger with integrated MOSFETs with power path selector. So it basically monitors the temperature of the cells and it only allows them to charge within a certain temperature window. So it is like a battery management thing. Now, looking here, it has got the pin out. There you go. Now we're coming in here, the VCC and VCC, these two are ground here. And if you have a look at VCC, it says uh, maximum. With Hold on, with respect to a ground, hold on, that is just ground. There's not an A ground on here, is there? One second. A ground, thermal pad, what's that? P, where's P? Oh, in the middle, okay. So that's just gonna be the same. So the middle's gonna be the same as the P ground, isn't it? Yeah, right, okay. And it says here, look, unfortunately, the minimum voltage is 0 0.3 minus 0.3 all the way to 30. So we are operating at three volts, so it's within range, so I don't think it's that. And also, remember that transistor looking thing that was an absolute mess? Well, I kept looking at it closer and closer and closer. There's nothing wrong with it at all. It was just gunk from something, some kind of like, you know, black gunk. So look at it here, like sticky stuff. I can actually see the readings on it now and it is the same as that one there. So I don't think there's anything wrong with that at all. Look, you can see it there, A-N-K-V, and it says one amp across there, same as that one there. So I don't think it's that, so we need to look further. So what's, I wonder is, just, is this just all to do with a flat battery? 
Maybe we should, should we try to put voltage into the battery to get it up to a level where maybe this will kick in? Right, let's thinking about this with a sensible head on. I've uh, taken off some of the gunk up here and we definitely have voltage going up into this area. So for example, after this chip, it works this way around. It goes through this massive inductor here. So this looks like some kind of, you know, like power supply. And if I was to go on my meter here and go between the ground here and here, you can see that it's 0 0.8. Yeah. Now we know that this chip is to charge the battery. It's a battery charger. Now, if I go onto here, we do have 0.8. So do you know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking that this has just become massively discharged and that's why it's not given anything. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this plugged in for a, I don't know, but I think I'm gonna take a break for about an hour or so. I'm gonna see if the voltage jumps up from 0.8, because 0.8 is something. You know, there is, that is voltage there. In fact, let's now see if we go on here, if it's climbing at all. Look at that, we're up to one. Fantastic. So that needs to go all the way up to seven point something. So maybe when it goes all the way to seven point something, then maybe this thing will turn on. It might be in some kind of like safety stage right now where it's not even powering from the mains because it thinks there's a fault on the battery. Look at this guys, it's been about 45 minutes. I've had just my dinner and uh, I was expecting it to still be on like one volt, but look, look at it now. 3.2 volts, we're certainly getting there. Fantastic, maybe we will be able to revive this. Right, let's just leave it for a good hour or so, see what happens. Okay, so I did leave it on there for about, oh, must be about two and a half hours or so, and it only went up to 3.3 volts, but yet when I take the battery out, it's reading, I think it was 1.8 on one lot of wires and 1.8 on another lot of wires, but then when I go across to red and black, it was just reading nothing. So uh, yeah, I'm not too sure. So what I did is, I've taken it out of its case here. And if you have a look, you can see that it's wired in series, which we already knew. It looks like they are, it says 3.6 volts, and then it says 7.92 watts at what hours. Now I haven't done the sums, but that says to me they're gonna be two point something amps. Because if it was two amps, that would be 7.2, and it's 7.92, so it's just over two amps each. Uh, they're 18, 650 batteries, so you know, just the normal, just the normal ones. Now watch this, this is interesting. So they're in series. So basically this red wire here goes up from the tab here, which is all covered up nice and neat, and it goes to this one here. It's a long red wire, not the short red wire. So from this side here, which I presume is positive, it goes to the red wire there. And then these two are linked together, negative and positive, because they're in series. And then this one goes to this tab here. So now if I was to go between the red wire and here, I'm getting a reading on my multimeter. So uh, if you look here, I'm getting two volts on this front one. So if I go between the negative here and here, you can see it's reading two volts. But now watch this, if I go from, so this must be the positive here. If I go from the positive here to here, it's not reading anything. So this cell here is completely dead. So what I'm gonna do is, I am going to strip it down further and actually see if I could charge the cells using my, I'll probably use that one that I used to charge the Nintendo Switch battery because that's 3.7 volts. That's like a little lithium charger. If I don't have any success with that, then I can always move on to just a bench power supply. But the little lithium charger, the TP4056 or whatever it's called, that will just work via USB. So I think that's what I'm gonna do to see if I can get any charge in this cell. Maybe the reason it's not accepting the charge is because this battery has completely failed. In which case then, I'm wasting my time messing with anything else. Okay, so this is the product here, the TP4056 and it's charged from just that power bank there. It's just a USB, so obviously you can plug it into whatever you want. I'm just using the power bank. Now look, what I've done is I've put the positive to the positive of the battery on the bad cell and the negative to the negative. I've just done it with the, just underneath the sticky bits. I've just kind of pushed the wire in there and just put the sticky bits back on and it's making a contact. You can see now we've got the red light here. I've just got the probes from the multimeter just to monitor it. And uh, if you have a look, it is climbing. We're at two volts already. It's been on for about three, four minutes. Look at that. Now I don't know if the charge is going to stay in the battery or not, 
but it's definitely accepting charge. That will need to get all the way to four, probably about 4.2 volts before it will stop charging. Then hopefully we might get a green light here. And then what I'll do is I'll do the same on that cell there. Or what I might do is I might charge this to maybe 2.5, then move it to this one and put it to 2.5. Then go back to this one and do it 3 and 3, because you're supposed to do them balanced, and I suppose we are con we are still connected there in the middle, so I think maybe I should keep swapping them. Because all I have to do is move them from here to here, then back to here again. But uh, yeah, it's definitely accepting a charge. Hopefully it'd be good enough just to do the testing. I still don't know what the problem is. Maybe there's something in here which is not charging the batteries and that's the fault. Or, because I don't know the backstory, or was just, just left for ages and the batteries failed and, uh, and that's the reason it's not working now. But either way I need to get some charge in here to plug into here to see if it does anything. So I'll get back to this hopefully when they're charged up. Now this is interesting, it's only been a minute later and now it's dropping. So this is reminding me of the Milwaukee battery that I did where it was just all over the place. Okay, so next day now, and I had this charging for quite a while. I've got this cell here up to 3.8, we'll check in a minute, maybe 3.9 now, it's been on for another half an hour or so. This cell, not taking anything. So when I'm charging it, it will go up to about 1.2, then 1.3, 1.4, then drop back down again, and then start all over again, and drop back down again. I had this on for hours, it's not taken a charge at all. So anyway, I haven't fully charged this one here, you can still see the red lights on there, but I think I've done enough. So basically, I need to get new cells for this, if it works, but there's no point in getting the new cells. Well, I've bought I've bought four new cells from Fogstar, the same place that I got the batteries from for the Milwaukee battery, but these ones are smaller, they're 18650s. Uh, so I've bought four of them because you know what, I'm gonna need them in the future. I needed one for the uh, uh, hair clippers and I just reused what was already there. But for the purpose of trying to get it to work, I want to put it back together with two working batteries in. Now, I don't care about the state of the batteries as long as there's voltage in them. I'm more hopeful now that it is a battery problem. Let me tell you why. On those hair clippers, even when you had it plugged into the mains, they did not work because the cells were completely discharged. And I remember thinking, what? Why doesn't the mains bypass it? When you've got it plugged into the wall, into a power outlet, why is it not bypassing it? But I think it needs a certain voltage in the cells to even power the battery management chip. So uh, where's that gone? Around this side here. Uh, this one here. So if the cells are completely flat, it doesn't even work when you plug it in. So I'm wondering if it's the same thing here. So basically, one cell here is going to be okay because hopefully it's going to keep its voltage. So if I go between the red wire here, which connects to this side, and the negative, you can see there 3.8. So that's going to be fine. But on this side here, I have nothing. So if I go here and here, it is completely and utterly dead. But what I have got here is, ages ago, Marcel sent over a load of things from the Netherlands, and in here, he gave me these little USB chargers because he took the batteries out of a uh, laptop. Now, they're not as powerful. I think these are only, what are they? 1300 milliamp hours, and these ones here are gonna be 2200. But again, for testing, I think it's gonna be okay. Quite nice these are though, aren't they? A little tiny little power bank. With its own little charge circuit built in. So uh, yeah, let's bodge it up now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this one out and put this one in and see if we can get it uh, up, and, up and running. Now, while I'm taking out the old faulty battery and putting in a working battery, let's give a shout out to the My Mate Vince Massive because we haven't done that yet. This month, the Massive consists of kitdigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service, Will Michaelis, Chris Seal, Felipe at MrKeebs.com, King Curd from Low Book Auto Sales, DJVG, Robert from Timsey's Auto Air, Albert at www.faroutsounds.co.uk and Stuart Park. Now, talking about one of these members here, Robert from Timsey's Auto Air, he has actually sent me through a little spot welder. I haven't set it up yet. If 
this does work and I need to get the batteries up and running properly when the ones arrive from Fogstar, then I will be setting up the spot welder and hopefully you will see it working in a video in a future episode down the line somewhere. But just for now, for testing, I am just going to solder these batteries up. This is dangerous because you shouldn't apply heat to these lithium batteries. But I've got my iron on very hot and I'm using a very big tip. So I'm only holding the heat on for a short amount of time so it's very localised. Obviously, it's still dangerous. Don't copy what you see in these videos. But I'm doing this so I feel safe doing it. But these batteries are charged. So it's much more dangerous having charged batteries than discharged batteries. Anyway... What I'm doing here is just soldering on the tabs, peeling off the tabs off the old spot wells and soldering them back on and putting them back together. Now these cells are not matched in the amperage but also they're not matched in the voltage that they've got in them at the moment because one is charged up to about 4.2 volts and the other one is whatever it was 3.8 or something volts so they're unbalanced at the moment but hopefully we will have something. Annoyingly though when I go across the red and the black wire on the connector there's still no voltage showing there but maybe when you plug it into the actual speaker itself then it will start working so uh, let's play in real time now as we're about to plug it in i think that's back enough for me just to uh to test it i've got everything plugged in as far as i can see so let's is that in at the end there hold on that connect is a little bit iffy that goes off to the power button let's see if it does anything now so Plug this in here. Hopefully it won't explode in my face. Here goes. Right, we're in. Didn't explode in my face. Good. Right, let's plug it in and see if we get any light or anything happening. Now, anything lighting up? No, it's not, is it? No. Do you know what? I thought that was just going to be battery related. Right, what's uh, balance this here? What happens if I turn it on here? No, so we've still got no power. What is wrong with this thing? Uh, so is it the fault that's drained the battery rather than the battery being the fault? It looks that way, doesn't it? Visually, because I can't see anything wrong with it, I don't think I'm going to be able to... Uh, I don't think I'm going to get this one going. It's showing no signs of life at all. Is this all battery related? Is this something to do with the board here that's now it's gone so flat it's not allowing the charge through? Because we haven't got anything on the, the, uh, the red and black. I wonder if I was to get my bench power supply and physically put voltage onto the red and black. You know, disconnect this battery, put voltage onto the red and black down here. Because it definitely says V, it says, uh, let's zoom in and show you, it definitely says like positive battery or something. Look, black red, it says V, battery and ground. If I was to put, for example, 7.2 volts onto there, I wonder would it come to life or does it need to have this signal thing here or is that signal thing and the other two wires purely to allow the charging what i'm not sure about is why have we got the other two wires going to the other side of the board because we've got the other two wires going down here somewhere can you see here is that so it can charge each cell individually or is it the battery that determines the charging of the cells you know the circuitry on the battery don't know What I do know, there's a date here, 2014. Uh, just make sure that cable's in there. Yeah, that's fully home. I think we should try to put 7.2 volts directly into it and see if anything comes to life. Let me get my bench power supply set up. Okay, I've got my bench power supply here, 7.2 volts, hit the leads together and I've got it down as 2.2 amps, there or thereabouts, because the battery pack is 7.2 volts and uh, 2,200 milliamps, milliamp hours. So now let's, uh, I need to get some little probes or something, don't I, to go onto here. I've got the power button here that I can press, I know you're not going to see it, but I'm hoping we might hear something. 
So, do I have to do I have to use that ground there or can I just use a bigger ground here? Let me just double check that. I should be able to use anything, shouldn't I? Yeah, so I should be able to just clip it onto there and touch it there to see what it does. So here goes. I'm going to just click this onto here. And I'm going to hit this here. Now let's see if it's going to turn on. Whoops. Wait a minute. Nah, it's not turning on. And it's not drawing any amps. Right, let me now plug in the charger into here. Right, so we're plugging in now. We're in, just double check, still doesn't turn on. No. Now let's see if it's going to turn on. Right, I'm on. Yes, got a, I've got a white light here, but you can't see. Uh, there you go, can you see the white light? So I've got a white light there. Oh, and it's look at the orange light here. Can you see the bright orange? You probably can't. Got a bright orange light here. And it's drawing 0 0.074 amps. Right, okay, do we have any volume? Hit Bluetooth. Yeah, I've got a little blue light. Sorry, I know you can't see anything here. Let me turn it off. So now, that says to me, let's get rid of that. That says to me it's battery related, isn't it? So somehow this thing here is not letting the charge through, annoyingly. It's such a thing, isn't it, like with Apple MacBooks and stuff, where when this goes down, the battery management side of it just blocks it, which is really irritating that it can't be reset. I wonder if you were to short out some pins on here, whether that would reset it. I might have a look online, see if that's uh, see if that's the case. Right, so let me get a uh, an aux in here just to see if we do have sound because I don't want to go and buy a new battery if there's uh, numerous other problems on here. But I think this is all battery related. I've got having fun repairs video playing here. Let's plug in the aux into there. Now we've got power already in, so all I have to now do is touch my positive here. Let's turn my bench power supply back on. Touch it here. Now let's see if it's going to come to life. Oop. Right, so we're on it there. Let's turn it on. I would have thought when you plugged in the aux, it would have just started to work. Sure. Here we go. Uh, yes. For a couple reasons. There we go. One, Kind of see the yes, I can hear Sean. Now there are holes here. Fantastic. And this one LED broke off, and my son stuck it into this hole here. How does it go? Instead of up, back in the back. But that's alright. So we'll have to take Whoa, this apart, uh, repair this, and see what we can do with that board. As far as this one goes, uh, it took a fall. Sounds clear. Baby's sister got her hands on it and chunked it. Fantastic. Okay, I think I just went off it there. Right. Uh, brilliant. So basically, I'm going to look online, see if there's a way that somehow you can, I don't know, reset this battery management thing in here. Right. Somehow, I've got it working. Somehow. But if I'm honest with you, it was pure fluke. I think I might know what I've done but maybe you can clarify down in the comments. But before I show you what I've done, check this out. I can't play the music because of copyright, so it will be muted. Check out how much this big sub or whatever it is called, is moving in and out. It looks amazing. Ready? Watch this. Oh my God. How good is that? I mean, maybe all speakers do that. I've just never seen them. Oh, look, I'm not an audio guy. But, uh, whoa, they are certainly moving in and out a lot. Right now, you can see that I have a green light here. Green light means it's charged. Now, watch this. If I unplug it, okay, green light goes out. But I've still got the light here. And if I press play again, I'll have to mute it. <coughs> 
Okay. Uh, all right, let me, let me tell you what I did. So, I've been working on this battery. I'm just gonna uh, unplug it all. Let me turn it off. I don't know if Bluetooth and stuff's working yet. How'd you turn it off? There we go, right. Uh, I was working on this battery here and I balanced the cells. So in other words, I made sure I had four volts on both of them, 4.1 volts on both of them. In other words, pretty much, pretty much fully charged. But I've been trying to read up about BMS's battery management system, I think it's called. Now let me zoom in. Now if you have a look here, I've got all different things going on. But basically, when people wire up their own battery uh, BMS's, from the batteries, you have it go into battery positive, which is this one here, and battery negative, which is this one here. And then you have the charging and the load connected to P negative and P positive. And then basically, I believe T is for the temperature to make sure that it's not getting too hot. And these are both some sort of data. But as well as that, I think this is how it's measuring individual cells to allow the balance charging. I think the balance charging might be done by that little chip that I was working on earlier in the board. You know the one that I was looking at earlier on the board? This, uh, this one here, I think, but I'm not too sure. This one here. Anyway, what I've been doing is, these two reds look to be connected to each other. But yet, if I went between the battery positive and the battery negative, I had my eight volts, whatever it is, yeah, 8.2 volts, 8.1 volts, but yet I wasn't getting anything between P positive and P negative, so it wasn't making its way through to the board. Now, P positive and B positive seem to be connected to each other, whether that's right or wrong, I don't know, I haven't done the traces, but there seems to be power on both of them. So basically, if I get my multimeter and go between here and here, I will have something. So let me just zoom out and show you. So if I go between the battery itself, you can see that I'm getting a nice voltage at 8.2 volts, so you can see it's fully charged. Now watch this, if I go on to the P plus and the battery negative, I'm also getting that. But I wasn't getting it between P plus and battery negative. But you can see now I am. Sorry, wrong way around, but you get the idea. I am now, and that's the reason the speaker is now working. So basically I was getting continuity between these two, but I wasn't getting it between P minus and B minus. And it goes through a current sensing resistor here. Now on this board here, it's more complicated because when I was going between, for example, the, uh, let's go onto the power P here and here, you can see I'm getting voltage. And I was getting voltage this side here. And I was getting voltage this side here. Yeah, and then they go into these three chips here. These three chips are all the same on the these three pins, but this pin's different, and these three pins are in common with each other, and this one's different. So then I was going across here, and I was also getting my voltage here, here, and here. But I wasn't getting my voltage here. But now I am. All I did is I was just probing round here then all of a sudden it started to work. So I don't know whether I shorted something out with my probe here and that turned on because I believe what I read is that you won't get an output on P minus and P plus until there's voltage on P minus and P plus. Then it will allow the circuit to turn on, initialize the battery protection circuit and then output the voltage down those wires. Right, okay, so bad news. It's not working again. Basically, as I started to tape it up, the middle joint broke. You know where I soldered this battery to this battery to make them in series? And now that it's broken, obviously that board's lost its power again. And now look, when I go across the positive and negative probes here, I'm not getting anything. Yeah, so if I was to go across these ones, you will see that I will have voltage. But I need voltage on not the white and blue, I need voltage on the red and the black. So let's now see whether or not we can recreate what we did earlier. But before I do that, I'm gonna see if I put eight volts into it, whether it will liven up. So I've got my bench power supply here set to eight volts because we know that this battery is, it's got eight volts in it at the moment. I'll tell you what, let's slow it down a little bit. Let's slow it down to 7.5, yeah? Because it's a 7.2 battery, isn't it? So I'm at 7.5 now, and I'm at, I'm at uh, what amps am I at? Yeah, I'm at 2.2 amps. Right, let's, uh, Let's see what's going to happen. So, get my leads the right way around. 
please don't explode. I'm just going to tap it right there and there. Let's try that again. It wasn't. It didn't draw anything there and there. Right. Let's see now whether that's enough to turn that on. Yes, there we go. That's all we need to do. Fan, yes, I've proved something. So you have to put voltage into it to turn it on. And now look, let's turn off the power supply. These are nowhere near it. And yet I now have a connection here. Fantastic, so that's all I had to do. So what I probably did is on those things, cause I didn't do that, I didn't put voltage into it. But when I was messing on the gates up there, I probably put voltage from the battery side into the power side. Do you know what I mean? Somehow, maybe on the negative, I'm not too sure. I don't know how I managed to do that. But there we go, that's what that's what I needed to do. So, hours ago, if I had just, because when that cell was like 4.1, and this one was like 3.8, I reckon if I had just done that, then maybe it would have livened up. But at least I know now the cells are balanced, so hopefully when it charges, it will charge balanced. Brilliant, okay, I'm really pleased. No, I'm pleased that broke in the middle there now, because now it's not guesswork. That's what's happened. Fantastic, right, okay. Right, I'm gonna put it back together, and let's see, see if everything's working. So I'm gonna neaten this up, make it safe, and uh, I might even try to wrap this background and make it look nice again. Uh, and then we'll see, maybe, maybe it's not gonna work. You know, when it starts discharging, it might not charge up again, but I'll do all that testing. Excellent. Here it is, all back together and the sound is phenomenal. I love this little thing. I can't believe how much volume it pumps out and I can't believe how crisp the sound is between the bass and the treble. I'll show you what, I downloaded the B&O app here and you can change it all around between bass and treble and put it to your exact liking. It is, honestly, it's amazing. I think it's amazing. Anyway, I've also got another little Bose mini speaker that I love. I love that thing. It's really nicely made and the sound, that sounds really good. I have to say, in my opinion, this is even better. And it appears to be working just fine. So you can see the lights on at the top at the moment. And now when I plug it in here, I've had it playing for about three hours now. And when I go onto my phone, I think it said 70% full. So that's not bad, is it? And if I plug it in there, can you see it's gone to orange? And when it's fully charged, it will be green because it was green earlier. But anyway, for this purpose of this one here, let's uh, unplug it. Now, let me just set it up on the phone. It sounds really, really good. I've just downloaded a little bit of music that I can play. Right, you can see 70% left on the battery. So, volume. Now, watch this. You can do different things here where they've preset it. But look, watch this. So look, listen to that. That's high treble. Low treble. Can you hear the difference? Low bass. High bass. It sounds so good. Oh my, 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 it sounds really, really good. So just to recap what happened, it was one faulty battery out of the two, but obviously it's a pack that you're not really supposed to take apart. But if it failed again in the future, I think I'd be quite happy taking that part. I've got a little spot welder. When the new batteries come in, I might even put two complete new batteries in, but I see how these are performing. I mean, three hours, 70%. I'm not sure what the original battery life on this thing was, but, uh, I mean, that's already pretty good, isn't it? So hopefully it will be okay. I'm really, really happy with it. Yes, in hindsight now, it would have been such an easy fault just to go straight to the battery, but I never knew that, you see. I thought that if the battery was faulty, it would have still worked via the mains, but that's not the case. Just like the hair clippers I did, you have to have a battery good enough, has to be a bit of charge in there to allow the device to work itself. So that's interesting. Really enjoyed that one. So uh, that is it for this video. Oh, also I've put an offer in for a nice strap. You can get these nice straps. You can get short ones and long ones. I've put an offer in. I mean, they're expensive when you buy them new, but I found one on eBay 
for £15. So I've put an offer in. It's a nice tan colour one. And I think a nice tan leather one. And it's got a little aluminium B&O button on. Of course you don't need any of that. But it will just make the product look a bit more special. Because for a B&O product, it doesn't actually look that nice you know around here is metal though so that is that is nice and cold it's just this thing here if this was metal it would just look lovely but it's not it's plastic so it feels a little bit on the cheap side but the sound of it is just amazing so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to play the song out and they will be my end credits so hopefully you enjoyed this video if you did give it a thumbs up and i will see you soon for another try and to fix video take care everyone